It was a real privilege to be the first a, a bishop assigned to the new South Georgia area. It was also a bit daunting to realize that I would be following in the train of Bishop Moore and Cannon and Fitzgerald and McDavid. But immediately the people of South Georgia made us feel welcome and at home. And I realized that South Georgia still knows how to practice Southern hospitality. I used to tell my friends that I got the plum appointment in going to South Georgia. I found a, a wonderful cabinet when I arrived. They were fiercely protective of their districts, but willing to compromise for the good of the conference. The wonderful cadre of pastors and, and lay leaders. And uh, Carol and I felt so privileged to have a whole new batch of friends in South Georgia. We discovered that South Georgia was consumed with compassion for mission, often leading to church in percentage of participation. There's a wonderful uh, hospitality that made us feel welcome. I will never forget how you cared for both of us after Carolyn's open heart surgery and later her stroke. Uh, we feel that South Georgia is our, was our second home. It's also a privilege to say Godspeed and all the best to, to Bishop King. You know that I have laughed about how far South Georgia has come from a loony bishop to a king bishop. I want to say thanks to Bishop King for his hospitality and graciousness. He's made it clear that I was welcome at any time. He gave me the privilege of speaking at annual conference and has always welcomed my return. So Bishop King, Godspeed to you and Rose as you move into retirement. You're showing good judgment in staying in South Georgia. And I'm sure you will continue to enrich the life of those who know you. Thank all of you for the privilege of having been with you. And God bless you for the future. Margaret and I were thrilled that our first Episcopal assignment was to the wonderful Episcopal area known as South Georgia. We found a wonderful greeting there immediately upon entering the bounds of the conference. Of course, we had grown up in Dothan, Alabama, which is just 15 miles outside of South Georgia anyway. So we felt right at home, and the people made us feel like we were welcomed with open arms, and we were grateful for that. And throughout our time in South Georgia, Margaret and I found that welcome to be continuous because that is the nature of the people in South Georgia. We found the South Georgia Conference to be one of the most gracious peoples we had ever seen. And also, the people in South Georgia are filled with a desire to be in mission and ministry for Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And we were grateful to be a part of that team. We found a wonderful cabinet. We found wonderful churches. We found wonderful clergy and wonderful lay people. Sounds like I'm really bragging on South Georgia, doesn't it? because I really feel that way. We could not have been more thrilled. And throughout our time in South Georgia, that feeling continued. It was a wonderful thing for me to follow Bishop Looney. I know he jokes a lot about being a loony bishop, but I had some big shoes to fill. In fact, I think those shoes are about size 15. Big man and a big gracious heart and a wonderful spirit. So I found it to be a little intimidating to follow Richard Looney as the bishop in South Georgia. But the people helped me learn how to be a bishop and to be a better bishop. And I'm eternally grateful for that wonderful love. And I'm now glad to be able to say a word of appreciation about Bishop James King. I was elected with a good pastor and a king. Now, I don't know how a Watson got in there. But nevertheless, to find Bishop James King following me as the Bishop of South Georgia was, for me, a great joy. And I believe Bishop King has shown the beautiful people of South Georgia his love in a most gracious way. James King is a wonderful human being. We wish him the very best as he moves into this new chapter of life, this chapter in retirement. And he's choosing to stay right there in South Georgia, and particularly in Columbus, which we love dearly as well. So I wish James King and Rose the very, very best in this new chapter, this new season of their lives. And I know South Georgia will continue to be a blessing to them 
as they have been a blessing to South Georgia. It's great to be a part of the South Georgia family. We feel that we will always have South Georgia in our heart. Thank you for your gracious, loving, wonderful, Christ-like spirit. As your bishop, I believe our goal as an organization is to support the mission of the church to make disciples of Jesus Christ. So we're constantly in a mindset to simplify and clarify on how to make disciples so all of us can participate in satisfying the mission of the church. The organization should be designed in a way that gets the results that we say we want in making disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. And in so doing, participate in growing a Christ-like world. How shameful it is when someone goes to church and feel like they have been put down rather than lifted up. One of the primary purposes of the church is to edify. That means build up to edify the believer. When you go to church, regardless of how you feel, when you leave church, when you leave fellowship, you ought to be feeling better than you were before. We sing the hymn, Leaning on the Everlasting Arms. What a fellowship. What a joy divine. Why? Because we're leaning. We lean on Jesus. Beautiful people, sometimes we will forget the mission whether we want to or not. The key is to write it, make it plain, teach it. Then with intentionality and regularity, practice it, routinize it, make it a holy habit, or we will destroy what we do not understand. We are here not for the duration, but for the donation we can make. What is it that we should do? Serve, serve, serve. Moses was talking about all the things he couldn't do until he was full of God. Then he could go say, Pharaoh, let God's people go. Peter was thinking about all that he wasn't doing and couldn't do, ending up denying Jesus, but being full of God, full of the Spirit. Nobody could shut him up. No one could stop him from speaking about the glory of God through Jesus Christ. No one. Hang me upside down, but you can't stop me from telling you about the goodness of God through Jesus Christ. Esther remembered all of her fears until she understood the fullness of God's purpose. Then she could go and face the king on behalf of her people. Beautiful people, if your self-worth and value is coming from what you have rather than from who you are, You, have, you are standing on sinking sand and weak ground. Beautiful people, those who want to follow Jesus must su submit themselves to learning. God is no respecter of persons. God does not care about where you were born or how you were born or how you look or the challenges that are in your life. God knows who you are. But more than that, God knows that God is God and that God is ready and willing, and it is the will of God to move in your life, then move through your life for the expansion of the kingdom of God on earth. When the Son of God shines in your life, there is more energy, there is more love, all because the light of Christ is shining on you. And when that light shines on the church, there's not less, there is more. More love, more growth, more happiness. We discover again that we are happy people. We are an Easter people because of the love of Christ. A resurrected Christ makes us a joy-filled people. Turn up the volume. 
turn up the volume of Christ in your life. Hear me, beautiful people. Jesus said, pray for the kingdom of God to come on earth. Jesus said, go and make disciples of all nations. Jesus said, you are to be my witnesses, both here in Samaria and unto the ends of the earth. Jesus said it, and I'm going to do it. What about you? If your answer is yes, then let us go to all the corners of the world, inviting everyone into a right relationship with God through Jesus Christ.